I would like to invite you for the very first time It's an interesting combo of art and plants all in the same space. At Art Lounge Manila on August 7, for Plantitos y Plantitas, which is brought to you by Art Lounge Manila and Arid and Aroids. everyone and thank you for once again joining us for the Plantitas y Plantitas live stream interview with the artists. Um, so the past two sessions were really exciting as we got a deeper insight into the artists, their processes and their artworks and their love of plants of course. And once again um, the show is already up just the paintings are already up at Art Lounge at the podium so if you're in the area please do not hesitate to just drop by and see the artworks for themselves and if you have friends who might be interested please invite them to see the exhibit as well and once again please like share and follow us on fb and ig at art lounge manila um yeah like and subscribe <laughs> and we also have a youtube channel now so um if you can find us on youtube please um, subscribe to us there as well. All right. So um, today we have we were supposed to have um, three wonderful women artists um, as our guests today, but unfortunately, one of them um, will not be uh, able to join us today due to technical difficulties, but will be joining us tomorrow instead. So for today, we just have two guests, um, and they are fantastic women artists, and I'm sure. You all are excited to get to know them a little bit more and hear more about their art and their love of plants and nature. So, without further ado, let's bring them in. 
the first of these fantastic women artists and painters is uh, Miss Julie Hill. She is a graduate, um, a fine arts graduate from the College of the Holy Spirit. She holds a second degree in interior design from the Philippine School of Interior Design. Currently, she is the managing director of an interior and floral design company. A watercolorist by heart, she is a member of the Philippine Guild of Watercolorists. Her artistic voice is described as unity in contrast, giving realistic detail to a focal centerpiece against an ab abstracted periphery. Julie considers herself a storyteller, using art to paint a visual message that echoes her heart. So let's bring her in. Hello, Miss Julie. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, you do, would you like to say a quick hello to our online audience? Um, yes, hello. Hello to my friends and relatives. <laughs> I asked them to come and join us. And of course, I'd like to thank uh, Art Lounge and uh, Art Lounge Manila and Ari and Aroids for giving us this opportunity to share the, the exhibit to our friends who are also plantitas and plantitos. So, yes, going to be <laughs> So excited. We're so ex excited to have you here today. In behalf of Art Lounge Manila, thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, yeah, and we're excited to hear more from you later on. But before that, let us bring in our next guest. Um, so our next guest, uh, Ms. Melissa Villasenor, in 1984, she obtained her bachelor's degree in fine arts, majoring in interior design from the University of Santo Tomas. She worked in the fashion industry from 1986 up until the present while also being fully committed to painting. She has been a member of Art Wednesday since 2007 and was president in 2012 until 2017. She is also a founding member of Floral Artists Manila in 2017. So let's bring her in. Hi, Miss Melissa. Welcome to our live stream. Um, can you hear us fine, Po? Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, would you like to say something to our online audience, Bo? Just a quick greeting. Uh, if you have any friends who are shouting out in the chat box, you can say hello to them, Bo. Uh, magandang hapon. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Welcome to Plantitos y Plantitas. <laughs> so, um... Apparently, we have two interior designers as well as artists um, in our interview today. So I think this will make for very interesting conversation. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Are we ready? So I hope you're, uh, no. well, super informal lang. Just um, we want to like give our audience just a brief background on um, what drives your art and how um also how plants um are integrated into the art that you create and how nature inspires you and things like that so without further ado um let's start with you miss julie um so i'll be addressing the, the same question to both of you paul so mm -hmm. the first question is what is the first question <laughs> do you consider yourself a plantita, a certified plantita. <laughs> oh wow! Um, certified, maybe not, not yet. I'm, I'm getting there. But I'd like to say that I am uh, a DIY plantita. If there's even such a word, um, I love plants. I have a, a small garden in the house, and I have a lot of potted plants inside my, my, my house as well, which I talk to when I water them every day. Hindi pa naman sila sumasagot sa akin, pero I guess they're thriving, so they must be happy with the way I treat them. I really do love plants. Um, in fact, I, I use a lot of potted plants for my uh, the line of work that I do. They are staple for the interior design work that I do. And uh, the, the greens, the plants, um, they're the last 
uh, key accessory that I like put on my uh, design mm -hmm. for me to say na tapos na yung aking project and it's good for a turnover. So without the greens, and I normally do tropical designs, no? so without the greens, it's not complete. So uh, I'm also a, a professional floral arranger or floral artist. And so I really um, do a lot or use a lot of uh, flowers, its colors, and its wonders. Um, but I normally, when I do my design, I, I hire a supplier to, um, to supply me with my aesthetic requirements. No? But during this pandemic, I was able, because of the time that I have, I was able to research <laughs> on my own on what kind of plants I can use uh, for indoors, because that's basically my need, no? and uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that I have discovered, <laughs> and I'm more confident now to go to Arid and Aroids and purchase <laughs> my pocket plants. and Aroids, <laughs> and I'm now confident because I know how to care for them and uh, correctly. So yeah, I'm not yet certified, but probably getting there. Uh, DIY plantita is some. <laughs> Perfect term for it. It's certified, but DIY plantita. So, yeah. so the plants are definitely a finishing touch to um your interior design projects. Yeah. So you yeah. um is there a big difference between using live plants and oh my gosh, plastic plants? <laughs> you know plastic because I used to uh, use silk flowers for my floral mm -hmm. arrangement because it's, it's easier and plus I didn't know how to care for live plants or live flowers so I know I used to use synthetic because it's easier but the, definitely there's a big difference because the live plants they, they, they give energy they literally or physically they bring out energy so it's it's part of the biological process. It's not only the fist for the eyes, but also it's it's the energy, the exchange of energy between man and plants, nature. So I go for the life shelter. Okay. If you know how to care for <laughs> if it dies, me just sad then because you killed a living thing, diba? No, diba? So research Google Google lang. Yeah, Google is your friend. Or if yeah. you find yourself at Arids and Aroids, I'm sure they will be more than willing to educate you and teach I you uh, the care right. of mm -hmm. and maintenance of your plants. Lala, lala. That's right. mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And then moving on to you, Miss Melissa, would you consider yourself a plantita, a certified plantita. <laughs> um, actually, I really don't know. Um, what's the, uh, what's the level of plantita na I, that I can call myself? Um, but before pandemic, I've been all, I've been already, ano, into gardening. Pero yung mga mga simple plants lang, mga ordinary plants, and then. Um, when pandemic came, so na, na ano na naman ako na expose ako sa sa mga new plants, mga katulad ng mga arid and aroid plants na nakikita ko sa sa Facebook. So that's the time na, oi, may, may mga bagong plants. So um, I used to kasi dati ang pinipaint ko lang ay bougainvillea. So nung nakita ko yung mga mag magagandang mga bagong plants in-incorporate ko na rin sila sa painting ko. Um, that was, pan, ano na, nung pandemic na. So, I don't know. If I tell plantita, siguro, I can call myself plantita being, um, kasi mga plants na yung nasa painting ko, but I'm not really the, you know, the collector type na talagang maraming plants because, um, because of my limited space here sa bahay. So, ayun. So I don't know what level of plantita thing um, I can call myself. <laughs> so kailangan pala natin i-define yung mga levels ng plantita ness na yan. Sige po, mag-research. Yeah, oo, oh, oh. kasi hindi natin alam ano ba. Uh, <laughs> plantita, so we yes. can also ask our Iba -ibang level yun. of plantita or plantita. Are you? So yeah, and, um it's nice to hear po na um you're discovering new plants and um getting to incorporate them into your artwork. Yeah. So um let's uh I'll use that now to jump into our oh, next yeah, question. Yeah. So um I'll start with you na po, Miss Melissa. 
how has nature and plants inspired you to create art? Like, for example, I know po uh, primarily very botanical po yung nature ng uh, artworks nyo, but has it always been the, your, yeah. your chosen subject matter or has that come in recently lang po? Uh, actually, bef- uh, when I started painting, talagang naka-mindset na ako na gusto ko ng garden, gusto ko ng more greens. You know, it because it comes my soul when I see when I see mga plants, lalo na kaya nilagay ko siya sa painting ko. So, yun, yun. So, nag, it inspires me kasi, you know, yung 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 vegetation, yung you know, the colors na na mag- magaganda. Mm-hmm. Ayan. So, I found it interesting po um, that, ano, uh, uh, the interesting thing I also noticed about your artworks is um, the titles you have for them. So, I think there's um, this one particular artwork. Uh, I'm going to just quickly flash it on screen for our audience. This one. So, um, can you share a little bit about the title you have for this and why you chose that particular title po? Um, it's... Um, uh, yeah. For, for Actually, because I... Yeah. Um, actually, I... Since uh, lahat ng mga paintings ko, karamihan, mga uh, verses from Book of Psalms, because aside from painting, I want to share... Um, you know, the, the, I want to share the Word of God. So, parang magkaroon ng konting depth yung painting. So, it's not just bagonvilla. It's not just uh, leaves and, you know, trunks. So, there's a, parang I want to share the, the, the Word of God through, through my paintings. Ah, okay. So yeah, so also so you're not just showing the beauty of things, you're adding um depth and meaning to it po mm-hmm. by adding uh verses from the Bible and also yes. sharing your with your audience and the spectators of your art at the same time. Yes, so yes. I think that's um that's yeah. that adds to um to the healing um nature of plants and art when yeah, we are yeah. um we're mm-hmm. encouraging words along with the artwork that we have. Okay, so um, yeah, Miss yeah. Lily, um, <laughs> your turn. Um, of course, um, you you mentioned a little bit about this already earlier, but how has nature and plants inspired you to create your art? Okay, I'd like to think of myself as uh, both an artist and a storyteller. Um, um, most of my pieces are linked to a message, often linked to a message or a word or a concept. Like for this uh, exhibit, Plantitas and Plantitas, my series, I titled uh, big words like uh, hope, uh, harmony, um, bloom, um, interdependence or resilience. These are big words. Big human words, you know, that mm-hmm. we as men we, we encounter and we go about. But you can find these big words in nature as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of insights that you can uh, pick from nature if you truly or keenly um, observe, you no? Know? And those insights parallel to the flow of human human life, like. Example, um, in one of my paintings, I use the sunflower. And the sunflower faces its light source. So representative, representative of a man looking for a source of light that they can anchor on. And that's hope. You know, but, but it is interpreted by nature. You can talk about flowers and the... And, uh, and plants and how they interact with the bees and the bugs and the insects. That is survival. Mm-hmm. It's very human. And, uh, and, and I, I also did something about uh, a lotus flower. The lotus. And, and when I do this, I, I kind of submerge myself into it and research because also, as I mentioned uh, a while ago, I am still in the process of learning my dreams. 
Mm-hmm. So I learned that the, the lotus flower during the night, they submerge themselves in the mud, in the dark, where all the adversities are, where all the prey and predators are. And in the morning when the sun rises, the lotus rises above the, the, the water, free skinning, without a touch of mud. And, and they do this every day. And that is resilience. So I, for, for, for me, these big words, um, inspired by nature, is what man goes to. And it's, it's so exciting, so thrilling to capture that, that concept on canvas and set it out there for, for people to, to, to catch the message. And I'm, I'm sure Lisa would agree with me that if there is but one person that would catch the message in our art piece, our task is done, diba, Lisa? <laughs> because that's the object of, of, of our art. Mm-hmm. Tell a story and to send a message out. Wow, that, that's super interesting. I love that story about, about the lotus. I, I had no lotus idea. Flower, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm super interested. I super enjoy hearing the backstories behind the research that goes into um into a painting because most people they only see the finished artwork and but oh it's a beautiful lotus but actually for the artist there's a lot of thought and um pondering and meaning that is put into it before it actually shows manifests itself on a canvas and it's so interesting and it's such an honor to be able to get a glimpse of that from um from both of you today so thank you for sharing that and yeah, um, also that also um, what you both said is really, really um, good. It's very demonstrative of the role of art um, and plants as well. Uh, but mostly art, the role of art is to um, just take those complex, intangible ideas mm-hmm. and to um, distill it into something tangible, something people can see something people can touch and something people can directly interact with because i mean these concepts these words like you said are huge and the phrases and the words from the bible can seem overwhelming sometimes but when we distill it into one single a visual, image, yeah a um, visual message into a visual message mm-hmm. i think our audience is able to relate and process it more and that in itself is why art is so valuable to us as humans, especially in difficult times like we are in right now. I know, Lassie. Miss <laughs> Melissa. Okay. Hope, hopefully she will come back. Um, but um, I'd like to show one of your artworks, Po, Miss Julie. So yes. yeah, I think you, you talked about this. This one is Harmony. It's watercolor on cold pressed paper. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about this po? Okay. Yeah, so it's a lotus flower. Favorite ko siya ngayon. <laughs> so it's a blue from under the water. Okay? Mm-hmm. But on the surface, you can just see the white and pristine lotus flower. Okay? Pero hindi nyo alam, uh, when, dark, when darkness comes in the evening, they hide. They go back to the, to the dark, uh, muddy waters. They hide until sun breaks out again. And under the water, you see a lot of interaction. Merong koi fish. Oh, the, the, the setting of this is uh, it's a garden pond. Okay, mm-hmm. and the lotus flower is is uh, sparingly used in in a in a, a garden setup, a garden pond setup. So here we, we see that the the koi flowers uh, the koi they emit a certain kind of energy mm-hmm. which the lotus flower receives. Mm-hmm. And the, in the same way the lotus flower gives out a kind of energy that the koi fish receives. So there is interaction. There is harmony. And also, um, I did a, another uh, piece that had a, a lotus on it. But, uh, well, anyway, um, it also describes what happens in the dark. You know, dirty, muddy. Uh, you you see the kingfisher swimming or catching a, a, a catching his lunch. So 
magulo, pero sa surface, maganda, malinis, masaya. This is how men, we, this is how man survive. We are resilient, no? In the day of pandemic, yes, that's the one. So it's also a lotus flower, and you see the, the kingfisher diving, you know, uh, in the murky water to catch his lunch. Pero yung, ano, yung lotus flower, masaya siya, hindi alam ng lahat na there's go something going on under. Very typical uh, or very representative of how man survives the dark days, the pandemic, di ba? Mm -hmm. We must be resilient and, uh, you know, uh, go forward and hope that there is light, there is new day, the sun will come up again and you'll be pristine and beautiful and white again, just like the mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are very good examples of how art imitates life, and mm -hmm. the message that you're trying to convey. It. I know it's your hope also that life would imitate your art in the sense of the message and um, encouragement that it conveys. And that is um, Miss Melissa back. Hello, po. Are you are you back, po? <laughs> Anyway, while she's coming back, um, we'll move on to the next question, Pumuna. So, um, you you've mentioned a lot about um your thought process behind um behind creating your I know your wonderful watercolor pieces, po. Um, so what particular thing or what particular part? Because I mean, we all like to see the the big picture, but if we go into the nitty gritty of creating the art, like per element, per brush stroke. Is there anything particular in the making of your artwork that you most enjoy and why? I think it's the, it's the whole process. Um, uh, the whole process or the whole emotional experience that I, I went through in coming up with each piece. Because when when you know when when you do a piece, you pour out your heart, you pour out your time, and when you see it at the end of the day, it's your best work. So, you mga hindi best, they don't get to the framer. No, <laughs> sure. Nasa ano na lang yon, nasa tabi na lang yon. Panggatong. Sabi na lang, wala pa di pa makahingi ng panggatong. Okay. So yeah, so every piece is 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 special. Every piece is a part of your heart. I uh, that is the most exciting and enjoyable part for me. No, it's just like writing a book. You know, you you create a visual message. And you hope that when it's out there, uh, it will land into somebody's hand or somebody's life and they get inspired by it. That's the, that's the most heartfelt. Mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so um, it's, it's such a nice thing to hear from artists that um, the creation of the artwork is not purely like expression. Ito yung feeling ko eh. That I just want to express myself. But it's so nice to hear from artists like you who do want to make an impact, who do want to share a message, um, who do want to help improve the lives of the people who encounter their art. And I think we need more, more artists who are able to do that or, or, or are willing to share their art in that manner. So thank you so much for um, creating the kind of art and sharing the kind of messages that... Um, you're sharing with us through your art. Um, it's it's amazing, and I'm flabbergasted to just hear about even the research that goes behind um, a single watercolor painting. That's just mind blowing to me. Na it it has that much depth um, that goes into it. Na it's not just paint and colors and water on on paper that it's really truly so much more and that's what makes it art <laughs> and not just splashes of paint on a canvas um <laughs> miss melissa are you ready to join us na po our hello can can you hear us po hello 
Hi. Um, your I know your network is um is down po. Ayan, it's it's back up. Hello. Um, can you turn on your video po? Baka it's off lang. I hear clicking. <laughs> But anyway, sige. Um, while while we're still trying to get Miss Melissa connected, um, we um we showed you um, Tita Julie, a little um example of Miss Melissa's artwork earlier. So um, and also hearing from um her thought process and the reason uh behind how she creates her artwork. Um, is there a particular thing that's um about her art? that struck you or what particular thing about her artwork did you enjoy? Okay. Um, I researched on uh, Miss Melissa's artworks <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I told her this, sabi ko, uh, Lisa, if, if there's one word that I can describe your work uh, with, it's, it's enchanting. You know, you look at her pieces and the, the colors are dreamy, they're misty, but the, the centerpiece is alive, it's, it's colorful, like you can smell the flower <laughs> with her work. So, sabi ko sa kanya, uh, I'm a fan. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, oil siya eh, di ba? Oil, mm -hmm. oil on canvas. So, para ma-create ma mo yung soft petals with oil is uh, it's something, no? With, with, with watercolor. Uh, th that's what the medium is for, so softness. Mm -hmm. Pero ang oil mahirap going soft ang petals, but si si Lisa uh, has done it, so I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan, I mean, primary, primary. Excuse me. Primarily, po, you are a watercolorist, but uh, do you also uh paint in other mediums as well? In college, uh, I, I used to double in oil painting. Pero, matagal na yun. <laughs> <laughs> so, I never realized that I'll do uh, the watercolor medium because mm -hmm. I, I always heard that it's the most difficult medium. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I am enjoying it. So, I, I'm glad that I was able to uh, meet a lot of mentors to guide me through the medium and uh, shout out sa teacher ko si Peter. We shout out. I hope they're in ano uh, they're watching this live stream. So uh, I'd like to ask you a little more about that. What um so I mean of course you have background in a lot of different mediums, but what got you into painting primarily? With watercolors, what about it? I mean, of course, you know, it's it's a very challenging medium. But aside from that, what about watercolors drew you to specifically use that medium in your art? Pandemic. No, actually, um, I I I I was introduced to the medium. Uh, one time while I was in a mall and I saw a live tutorial by this teacher. And uh, so I went in and uh, and um, sat down and that's, the rest is history. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I didn't particularly choose that medium. I, I tried it, you know, kasi matagal na nga akong hindi nagpa-painting. So uh, I tried it and uh, yeah, no particular reason. Um, I eventually liked the medium, so. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> for um, do you have a message for any aspiring watercolorists out there? Since I mean, um, yun nga pandemic that watercolors are very highly accessible, and if anyone wants to dabble or try, try, mm -hmm. um, would you um have any suggestions on how they can get started in watercolor? Yeah. Find find a group. It's, it's very encouraging and it's fun to do this with a group. You know, you encourage one another. And uh, my, my teacher would always tell me that you paint every day. No matter what, it's every day. You have to paint every day. So uh, uh, that, 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 uh, that message or that lesson from my teacher really 
stuck to me. So for those uh, aspiring, and I have a lot of friends I'm encouraging to enroll in uh, a, a group online teaching. Online naman siya eh. Online, mm -hmm. online uh, tutorial. And you don't have to really get to know everything right away. You don't even have to be a fine arts graduate. Uh, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how how you know, God will open doors for you. Like I am as surprised as my friends because I didn't know that I could do finish a painting <laughs> using watercolor. So uh, it's it's an open door that God opened for me, and I'm stepping in with a mission. So I hope God makes <laughs> <laughs> me faithful. <laughs> Ayan po. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so like um, since you mentioned that um, you you have you're creating this art um as a mission. Um, why do you think it's important? Um, especially in times like now with the pandemic and people in social isolation and all, that we turn to nature and plants and art um as a means to cope or to uplift ourselves? Um, nature is very re relaxing. You know, you, you hear the, the chirping of the birds, you hear the droplets of water touching the silent plants. You can smell the breeze. Uh, it relaxes you. The art, art is the same way. And... Um, Art or being creative is the same way. Uh, personally, I go inside my little corner or I go to a little corner and pour my heart out, pour my life in uh, a creation. I shock the outside world. Uh, I listen to my music. I get away, uh, away from my cares and my worries and my woes. And I just concentrate in giving something of myself to what I am creating. And at the end of the day, when you have given out something, you rest. You feel recharged. You feel rested. I believe that whenever you give something of yourself, when you ever, whenever you create something um, that does not only benefit you, but also it benefits others, Mm -hmm. you let go of something from yourself and you feel uh, you feel renewed, you feel recharged and you're, even God, when he finished his work, he rested, he found rest, he even said it was very good so it's, uh, it's my, my hope and my wish that people, you know uh, we all have something to give, we all are creative so go find your little corner and do something. It doesn't have to be art. It can be like you're good at cooking or you're, you're good at writing or sending a, a one-liner encouragement, uh, encouraging text. Just do it. And you, you'll see that when you have given up something of yourself, you will find rest. You will be relaxed. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, relaxed and renewed. I mean, I believe, I personally believe that uh, we are all creative beings created by a creative God and we are all created to create and that mm. all that creativity gets built up inside of us and then it's only when we pour it out that we are able to be filled back up again and be refreshed. Oh, yeah. That's right. So mm -hmm. I, I think that exactly like what you're saying, that is a big value um, that art uh, gives to to people you don't have to think of yourself as an artist but um the act of creation and being creative is possible for each and every one of us yes. yeah yes. <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for your insight um the discussion today is was super super duper full and substantial and also very very interesting so thank you for sharing so much with us today and as you have poured out to us um it is our hope that you'll also be filled even more so you can create more art <laughs> yeah <laughs> so do you have any final messages for our audience right now um, yeah, well, just for you to find your little corner and uh, empty yourself so that God can fill it back. 
thank you to uh, Art Launch Manila and uh, Arid and Aroids for allowing us to uh, share, to join you, uh, to share to the world that nature and man, the most beautiful creations of God, they are worth saving and they are worth caring for. So, salamat. <laughs> thank you so much po for joining us and um, thank you for your time and thank you for all the insights that you've shared with us today. We really, really appreciate it and um, yeah, we hope to see you in the opening reception soon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so yes. that's going to be exciting. Thank you po. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so that uh, concludes today's session of Plantitas e Plantitas live stream chat with the artists. So today, um, we talked um, to Miss Julie Hill and briefly to Miss Melissa Villasenor, um, two women artists who are leading the charge in creating wonderful pieces of art that not only carry beautiful images, but also carry a beautiful and significant message along with it and that we that we believe um is the true value of art what it can add to us not just to the aesthetics of our home but add to our souls as well right so once again we would like to remind you that the artworks are now on display at art lounge manila and the podium and you you can be free to view the artworks at any time um, but also, um, social distancing protocols still apply. So yeah, just wear your face masks and face shield and make sure to keep safe. Um, and also, um, just reminding you about our partner, Arids and Aroids. The plants um, that we've mentioned are not on display yet, but they will be put on display when we are finally allowed to have our opening reception for the show. And details will be announced soon so that's it thank you so much again for spending the time with us this afternoon um we hope um that you received something from this and we hope that it gave you a be better insight into the artworks and the artists that we are presenting in plantitas y plantitas so again in behalf of art lounge manila i'm sindel piausas thank you for joining us and god bless you all Stay safe and have a wonderful rest of the day. I would like to invite you for the very first time It's an interesting combo of art and plants all in the same space at Art Lounge Manila on August 7th for Plantitos y Plantitas, which is brought to you by Art Lounge Manila and Arid and Aroids.